So now that I think about it, I just saw an IG post of a birthday cake that someone made for Harry Potter. You know, the fictional wizard. Apparently his birthday is July 31st. Now, I don't know if author J.K. Rowling realized that she gave Harry Potter a birthday that coincided with Lamas, but it does. Welcome to the You Are the Spell podcast with Aunt Carla. Join me each episode as I teach witches and other spiritual practitioners how to develop magical confidence and sovereignty in their practice. So moving right along on my witches year holiday witchy sabbat podcast episodes, today I want to talk about Lamas, Lamas and Lunasad. What is that? As you know, I'm a hoodoo person, so what the hell do I know about any of these witches of the year, these turns of the witches wheel? Um, actually, not necessarily a lot, but because I am a garden witch and I am finding myself more and more in tune with nature and the seasons and, and how all of that is going, um, I have been paying more attention to these different Sabbaths, more, I suppose, from a from a nature perspective, but it's been really helpful to do the little research and find out what these things are all about. So today I want to talk about Lamas and Lunasa, as I said. So what is Lamas? Lamas is a traditional festival celebrated on August 1st or thereabouts in the Northern Hemisphere. And if you're in the southern southern hemisphere, shout out to Hana from Suburban Witchery in where is she? She's in Australia. That's celebrated February 1st on the other side of the world. So the name Lamas is derived from the old English term Hlaf Messe, which means loaf mass. And it emphasizes the importance of the first wheat harvest and offering loaves of bread to the church. So Lamas is one of the four Gaelic seasonal festivals of the Celtic calendar, and it marks the beginning of the harvest season. It's a cross quarter day, meaning it falls halfway between the summer solstice, aka Litha, and the autumn equinox, aka Mabon. Now, this festival, the festival of Lamas or Lunasa, it has its roots in pre-Christian traditions, and that's why Lamas is also known as Lunasa, because it's associated with the god Lu in ancient Celtic mythology. And Lunasa, the difference between Lamas and Lunasa is that Lunasa is a pagan holiday and it's one of the eight Wiccan Sabbaths during the year. So if you are listening to my podcast and you are Wiccan or you might know someone who is Wiccan, you might be able to have a conversation. So you're wondering what those Wiccan witches are doing. Right now, they are celebrating Lunasa. Now, if you're a gardener like I am, Lamas or Lunasa, it marks the time of the first harvest. My herb garden right now is currently bursting, I tell you, bursting with mint, lemon balm, basil, sage, rosemary, and thyme. So this will be a good time for me to harvest those herbs so I can dry them for use in rituals and spells later on. Now, I have also, I'm very proud, well, I used to be, <laughs> see, I had these mugwort plants, you know, I've been like, I, I've been on a journey to, to grow mugwort, and then two years ago, I had ordered some, some mugwort, a, a mugwort plant, and, but I, I, I wasn't quite ready for the mugwort yet, because I was, I knew that it was, you know, it's a very witchy herb and it's, it, it's associated with dreams and intense dreams and, and, uh, contacting ancestors, but it didn't have any effect on me. But I think it was also cause I was kind of afraid. I wasn't quite ready for it, but this year I actually found them in the wild and I was like, oh my God, mugwort, this is great. Maybe it's time. It's time for us to work together. So I found these mugwort, I found these two plants in the wild and they were growing lush and beautiful in a drainage, like a, like a, like a sewer drain near the side of the road. And I brought them home and I replanted them. But yesterday I discovered that they are quite tasty to deer and Therefore, the mugwort has been munched to the quick, like all of the the poor, 
leaves and whatnot are just they've just been chewed up it's oh, I'm so upset anyway so i've added a shelf to my porch garden so now the mugwort is out of reach to those deer but i have nothing to harvest from them fortunately mugwort grows aggressively and if you know anything about gardening they're also known as an invasive species because they have such an aggressive growth pattern but the beautiful thing about that is that i will have new leaves next week in those for those mugwort plants so um that's good but i don't think i'm gonna prune them again until the next harvest which i guess will be maybon the fall equinox wow wow time flies fall is right around the corner so if your instagram feed the ones from your favorite witches of course if you've been seeing a lot of bread picks cake picks like people baking stuff and even corn doll picks like little dolls made out of corn husks that's because llamas i.e or aka lunasa it celebrates the grain harvest so that first harvest is also the harvest that's very important for grain and speaking of corn i had to google it because i didn't know if corn was a grain or a vegetable and it turns out that it's both so this is just you know little little backstory information in case it's helpful. Corn can be considered either a grain or a vegetable depending on when it's harvested. So corn that's harvested when it's fully mature and dry, it's considered a grain. So for example, popcorn, cornmeal, corn grits, they're classified as grains in the USDA's dietary guidelines. And if you're wondering if you're outside of the United States, USDA is United States Department of Agriculture. Now, now that I think about it, I also saw an Instagram post of a birthday cake that someone had made for Harry Potter. You know, the fictional wizard. Apparently his birthday is July 31st. Now, I don't know if author JK Rowling realized that she gave Harry a birthday that coincided with llamas, but it fits. So there's all these baking, there's all these cakes I'm seeing in my feed, cakes and corn dolls and breads and kind of making me hungry but anyway there is an importance why why grain is important and why this holiday is important so in early ireland it was not good to harvest grain before llamas if you did harvest before that time that meant that the harvest from the previous year was going to run out before the next harvest was ready and that would mean that the farmers would have failed in providing for their community. So you see these early holidays are all connected to nature and the harvest. So on llamas, the first sheaves of grain were cut. And by that night, the first loaves of bread for the season would have been baked. The word llamas comes from an old English phrase that translates to loaf mass. And in early Christianity, the first loaves of the season were blessed by the church during mass. And just to give you, you know, we eat all kinds of things right now well, in general, but grain is a very important crop for most civilizations. So if the grain was left in the fields for too long, or if the, the bread made from the grain was not baked in time, families might starve. So it's all about the grain and it's all about the bread. So let's talk a little bit about pagan history right now. And, and pagan really means pre-Christian. So we talked about llamas meaning loaf mass. That is when the loaves of bread were brought to church and they were blessed. But before there was llamas, it was Lunasa. So the name Lunasa comes from the Celtic god Lu, also known as Lu. <laughs> and this god was associated with the sun, light, and craftsmanship. Lu was considered a multi-talented deity associated with various aspects, including the sun, light, craftsmanship, skill, and even war. He was often depicted as a heroic figure, renowned for his wisdom and mastery in multiple disciplines. According to Celtic mythology, 
Lou held a significant place in the pantheon of gods and was the son of the sun god, Sion, and the granddaughter of the sea god, Mananan Maklir. That's as good as my Gaelic is at this moment. So Lunasa was a time to give thanks for the first fruits of the harvest and to honor Lu for his blessings on the land and the crops. This festival celebrated the abundance of nature, community gatherings, and various activities. The name Lunasa, Lunasa itself is derived, believed to be derived from the old Irish term Lunasad, which combines Lu's name with Nasad, meaning assembly or gathering. This reflects the communal nature of the celebration where people would come together to honor the God and give thanks for the bounty of the land. So during Lunasad, Lunasa, people would engage in some of the following customs and activities. So they would have games and competitions. Since Lu was believed to be a skilled warrior, athletic competitions and games were held in his honor. So there were activities such as sports, races, and contests of skill and strength. Also, there was feasting. Lunasau was a time of communal feasting and sharing. People would gather together. They would bring their freshly harvested crops and enjoy a grand feast. Gosh, that sounds good, right? Also, bonfires. Bonfires were an, 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 a very important part of the celebration. People would light bonfires to represent the power of the sun, and they would often drive their cattle between two bonfires as a ritual to protect them and ensure fertility for the next year. I remember that also during Beltane that they do that, taking the cattle and 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 um, driving their cattle between those two bonfires. So, so they did. A, there was a lot of fire making um, in these in these pre Christian days. And there were also pilgrimages, pilgrimages, yes. Lunasa was also a time for pilgrimages to sacred sites and holy wells to seek blessings and healing. And then also hand fasting, the old term word for getting married, getting hitched. In some regions, Lunasa was associated with the idea of marriage or hand fasting for a year and a day. Couples would come together and if they were still in love after the year, they might formalize their commitment and really make it permanent. And also making those corn dolls. So some communities would create corn dolls or figures from the first grains harvested. These dolls represented the spirit of the harvest and they were often kept until the next planting season. So this is just, these are just some of the activities that would happen during in, in those pagan tradition, in the pagan tradition of Lunasa. So now I want to talk about magical correspondences for Lunasa and or Lamas. One of the cool things that I see Wiccan witches do, or just pagans in general, is that they update their altars for each of the Sabbaths. So there's about a new Sabbath every, you know, the turn of the, the wheel of the year is about every two months. So that means they will have an altar that they keep in their home that they update it for the particular season or the, you know, the, the turn of the wheel. One of the members of the Red Soul Flower Magic family um, is Deanna, and she makes the most gorgeous altar updates. Like whenever she uh, updates her altar and she takes a picture and shares it with the group, I'm like, oh my God, blown away. Now, you do not have to get fancy and and do anything really elaborate. I know that Deanna has been doing this a long time and she has a lot of items that she's accumulated over the years and she's able to switch things off. But if you would like to mark this time of the year, I have some correspondences for you. And sometimes it's fun just to do these, just to kind of mark the time because these, these, these practices, they are connected with nature and it makes you aware of what is going on at any given time 
in, in, in the natural world. So the colors that are associated with Lunasa are shades of yellow, gold, orange, and brown, as they represent the ripening of grains and the warmth of the sun. Now plants or herbs um, associated with Lunasa are meadowsweet, chamomile, sunflower. You're definitely gonna see a lot of sunflower. Uh, heather, grains such as wheat and barley are also associated. So you might also see people have wheat, um, like wheat, those wheat strands of wheat, I don't know what you call that, um, on their altar. And you could just have corn, you know, if that, is, if that is also meaningful to you. Now, when it comes to crystals, the crystals that are associated with this holiday or the Sabbath is carnelian, citron, amber, and tiger's eye. These are kind of like all reddish, orangey gold. They are all believed to align with the energies of abundance, harvest, and the sun. If you want to use incense, then frankincense, myrrh, and sandalwood invoke a sense of sacredness and connection to the divine. So those are good for this time of the year. When it comes to foods, whether you want to uh, have them you have an offering on your altar or have some kind of feast there are bread grains berries apples any other fruits and vegetables that are harvested during this time they're appropriate for lunasa feasts now when it comes to symbols different symbols include sun wheels corn dollies scythes you know like what you use to cut wheat um sheaves of wheat sheaves of wheat i guess that's what i was looking for sheaves of wheat are common symbols associated with lunasa so if you wanted to make any of these yourself maybe with your kids just by yourself you can make them and place them on your altar now when it comes to deities besides the primary deity lu other gods and goddesses who are connected to the harvest the sun and abundance um, include demeter Ceres and Freya. So they are related to the harvest, the sun and abundance. And if you also work with those deities, you can also um, honor them at this time. Okay, and then there's also activities that are also correspond with this holiday, such as uh, outdoor activities, athletic competitions, crafting corn dollies. They're all different fun ways to celebrate the season if that calls you. And when it comes to intentions, this is a time to focus on gratitude for the abundance in your life, to celebrate your achievements and to set intentions for a bountiful harvest of personal goals. It just so happens that today, August 1st, when I am doing this, today is actually, you know, Lama slash Lunasa, it is also the full moon. It is a full moon in Aquarius. So it's definitely a great time to, to, for gratitude, for, for harvesting and for recognizing your achievements and, and the abundance in your life. So it's very fitting that, that this year, especially that it's all fitting together. So this is a great time to set intentions for a bountiful harvest of personal goals. And then of course, rituals. You can also perform rituals on for during Lunasa and they all involve uh, giving thanks to the gods for the harvest, for seeking blessings in the coming months and expressing appreciation for the interconnectedness of life and nature. So if you are also working with the full moon, this is a great time for all of that. You can create your own ritual that that involves all of these different acts of gratitude. <laughs> So if you're interested in celebrating Lunasa, it can be a meaningful and enjoyable experience because it connects you with nature and the changing seasons. And I have some suggestions for how you can celebrate it if you like. So the first one would be a harvest feast. So you could host a special Lunasa feast with your friends and family. You can prepare dishes using seasonal fruits and vegetables and grains like cornbread, berry pies, and dishes featuring freshly harvested produce. Another way to celebrate is having an outdoor picnic. Plan a picnic in nature, such as a park, a meadow, or by a lake. 
pack a picnic basket with Lunasaw-inspired foods and enjoy the day outdoors. Next idea is a bonfire ritual. If it's allowed and it's safe, have a bonfire in your backyard or at a designated location. You can also light candles if a bonfire isn't feasible. Use this time for meditation, reflection, and expressing gratitude for the harvest and the blessings in your life. One of the community members, Sean, she said that she's going to have a fire pit. So she's going to do a fire pit this evening, which sounds very cool. Another thing that you can do to celebrate Lunasa is do a hand fasting or renewal of vows. Since Lunasa is associated with hand fasting and commitments, if you're if you are in a committed relationship, consider a hand fasting ceremony or renew your vows on this special day. Next up, create corn dollies. We know we can't forget about them. You can craft corn dollies or dolls or figures using straw or corn husks. They can represent the spirit of the harvest and, and, and serve as decorations or talismans for the coming year. Another way to celebrate is through athletic competitions. Y'all know I ain't gonna be doing that one. But if that's your thing, <laughs> you can organize friendly athletic competitions, sports, or games with your friends and family to honor Lou's association with skill and craftsman, excuse me, skill and sportsmanship, not just craftsmanship, but sportsmanship. You go on with your bad self, Lou. Another thing you could do is go on a nature walk or a pilgrimage. So that means take a walk through nature, maybe, or, or maybe even visit a sacred site, such as a forest, a hill, or a holy well. You can use that time or this time to connect with nature's energy and reflect on the changing of the seasons. That sounds lovely. Another suggestion is just to express gratitude. Set up an altar or a sacred space and decorate it with the seasons of the harvest and items that represent abundance. Spend quiet time in reflection, expressing gratitude for the blessings in your life. Also, crafting and art. You can engage in creative activities such as making sun catchers, painting sun symbols, making sunflowers, or creating artwork inspired by Lunasaw themes. I have more. There's also charitable acts. As Lunasaw is a festival of giving thanks for abundance, you might consider participating in charitable acts of donating, I can speak, <laughs> consider participating in charitable acts or donating to a local food bank or other community organization. Of course, you can also participate in meditation and divination. You can Perform some kind of meditation or divination ritual to gain insights into the upcoming season or seek guidance on your personal journey. And then of course, final, last but not least, have a garden blessing. And if, that means if you have a garden, perform a garden blessing ritual to honor the earth's fertility and express gratitude for the crops that you've grown. I really like this idea. I think I'm going to do that. So I haven't harvested my herbs yet, but I believe when I will, when I, when I do harvest them, because my plants are just so lush, except for the mugwort, <laughs> but the plants that have, that, that have just grown so beautifully and before I harvest them, I think I will do some kind of blessing ritual. And I'm also grateful that mugwort has, you know, found its way back to me. And I'm grateful that it will grow back rather quickly. And I'm grateful that the plant isn't destroyed. I still have the stems and little pieces <laughs> of leaves. So that means that there is still the opportunity for more mugwort to grow. So remember that Lunasa or Lamas, whichever you choose to, to uh, celebrate, it's a time of celebration and connection. So feel free to personalize your activities based on your beliefs and what feels meaningful to you. Whether you celebrate alone or with others, 
The essence of Lamas and Lunasa lies in acknowledging the cycles of nature and giving thanks for the abundance in your life. Because you are magic. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. And be sure to tell all your witchy friends. If you have a question or comment, drop me a line at theredsoulflower at gmail.com. That's S-O-U-L-F-L-O-W-E-R. And I'd love to hear from you. You can also join the Red Soul Flower Magic family on Facebook to continue the conversation.